Hello everybody, what's good? Welcome back to my channel and if you are someone new here, then welcome to my channel. Today I'll be showing you how the basic tools inside Adobe Lightroom functions. As we all are now in quarantine and bored, this can be the best time to do something productive and learn editing your own photos professionally without spending zero money with just Adobe Lightroom and your smartphone. So first of all, what you need to do is you gotta have the Adobe Lightroom application downloaded in your phone and if you don't have it in your phone don't worry go to the app store type in adobe lightroom and here this one is the application so click on it download it and as i have downloaded it already on my phone i don't need to download it so after you are done downloading it what you need to do is you got to open up an Adobe account using your Gmail. Otherwise, you can use your Facebook account to open the Adobe account as well, because that Adobe account you can use over all other Adobe softwares. And this is really important. So make sure you remember your password that you're using and uh, your Gmail account. Now, let's enter Adobe Lightroom and see how the interface looks like. So over here you can see all this kind of fancy stuffs. So let me break it down to you guys. This home sign over here on the top left corner basically means whatever you are having and it's kind of a newsfeed kind of thing. Second of all, you have this library where there will be records of all your photos, uh, the photos you clicked through Lightroom and even you can create albums depending on the type of pictures you are editing so that it becomes easy for you to sort out later on. So without further ado, let's open up a picture. Let me show you all the tools. Right, to show you all the tools and how they function, I need to open up a photo. So I have already a photo imported over here. I'm gonna open it. So in the lower left corner, you can see there is selective, there is healing, there is crop, and there are profiles. So the selective and the healing, they are basically functions which are available in the paid version of Adobe Lightroom, but you really do not need both of these functions because we can get this work done from any other software later on. And without these two function, you can do all the necessary work in Lightroom without spending any money. With the crop tool, what you can do is you can basically change the aspect ratio of your picture, you can straighten the picture, you can change the angles, you can flip them, you can rotate them, whatever you want. In the profiles, what you have is basically presets. These come with Adobe Lightroom. There are kind of like a bunch of presets like artistic, black and white, modern, vintage, and everything like that. I will be showing you in the second part of this uh, Adobe tutorial how you can edit your photos using all these things. So let's not talk about it right now. Let's get back. Now, this automatic function as you can watch over here is basically something that Adobe Lightroom does. It automatically enhances your picture, but I do not recommend using it because it really limits the functionality of you, uh, you to exploit the picture and like, you know, make it your way. Now, this light function is really, really necessary and we will be using it most of the time when we come into Lightroom. So let me open this light function up. As you can see over here, we have got exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites and blacks. So what does exposure does? Exposure basically reduces or increases the amount of light you have in the photo. As you can see over here, as I'm increasing the exposure, it is increasing the amount of light available inside the picture. As we are decreasing the exposure, it is decreasing the amount of light in the picture. Now, what about the contrast? Contrast basically uh, acts as the vibrancy of your picture. If we try to define it in an easier way, as you can see, when we are increasing the contrast, it is becoming more like vibrant. The colors are becoming, the colors are popping out more better. When we reduce the contrast, the colors are fading away. So what happens with highlights? Highlights basically acts well, kind of like, you know, it just masks over the shadows available in your picture where there is a lot of light and you think that it is not necessary. You can control it using the highlight options and shadows. As you can understand, shadows are basically how much shadow you want in your picture. If we increase the shadow, you can see uh, these places that were darker before 
appears and when we remove reduce the shadow you can see that they go away because let's say over here in this picture we are focusing on the sky and we want the sky to pop out we want to show how beautiful the sky looks but not the buildings lower so what we will do is we will decrease down the shadow and as a result it will make them black and just stay the shape which makes this photo more artistic and more like amazing to look at now we have the option of whites so basically with whites you can increase the amount of whites in your picture and decrease them and with the blacks is the same you can increase the amount of blacks in your photos and decrease the amount of blacks in your photos using this all right so now that we have looked into the light segment we will go to the next segment which is this color segment right so let's click on the color so in this segment what happens is this tool allows you to play with the colors in the picture so how do we do that let me show you first in the very beginning this picture looks something like this can you see this is purely blank and with the help of the color tool I basically changed the whole photograph into something else and yes you can do it as well so today I will be showing you over here how you can manipulate these tools and in the part two of Adobe Lightroom tutorial I will be showing you with an exact picture of how you can manipulate the colors basically so look the temperature is basically how warm you want your photo to be that means how warm you want your photo to be or how cool you want your photo to be that's how it will be working and the tint is basically not that important I don't play around with the tint that much it depends totally on the uh, uh, photo that I'm using but most of the time what I use is the option is this one the mix option mix so let me click on the mix as you can see there is this red color look red color orange color yellow green uh, this is I guess uh, what's the name I forgot actually but yeah it's kind of sky blue this one is a darker blue this one is a purple uh, I mean this one is maybe a violet and this one is a purple all right so with this colors what happens is you can manipulate select uh, each color and you can manipulate the picture exactly in that way so now for this instant I'm choosing the red color let's see how I manipulate that look I'm dragging the hue button to the left and right right so it is having no effect so we can understand that this color is not available over here and we can increase the saturation decrease but it doesn't really matter because the red is not in the action but if we let's take a look over here in this one in this one if we change the hue in the orange color we can see that the color of the sky changes so that is how in different uh, location in different places you can play around with the colors as you can see uh, the blue and the I mean this is basically an ocean blue the ocean blue color of the sky complements that orangey shade rather than a yellowish or kind of greeny shade because that looks really awkward but when it comes like a bit of orange a darker orange it looks really nice so this is how you can manipulate all the colors and I will be showing you how you can easily understand this thing in my next part which is part two alright so we are done with this option this is what basically this color palette does next let us move out to effects in effects you will basically be observing texture clarity dehaze vignette so if you are turning on the vignette option you can get the midpoint feather roundness highlights and every other thing there is grain as well so if we look at this option this option comes in handy when you have a picture that is not that clear yeah, let's say if you want to uh, make something more visible you can uh, turn on the texture option you can increase the texture so and now you can see the clouds are becoming more visible but I don't really want it because uh, it looks uh, it doesn't look that real so when we decrease it or when we like you know keep it in the exact same position and we do not change the texture the sky looks much better in the clarity what happens is the picture becomes more clear uh, if when you click the picture if it was a bit hazy this clarity option can make the picture look a bit more clear the dehaze option we do not need to go in the dehaze option because uh, I'm other, uh, in our basic day-to-day uh, -day use we do not need that the Viganite is uh, sometimes really important to darken around the corners now as you can see I uh, if you are using let's say a portrait when you're uh, editing a portrait you do need this option to darken the sides so that you know you can get a more cinematic look see 
and with this midpoint what you can do is you can uh, change in the uh, inner radius of the darkness you want in right and you can even make the sides white either black so you know just change it according to your taste and the feather option what happens is it basically blends in the um, the vignette option with the picture okay so that is much of it and over here the highlights things doesn't really have to work that much because already we are working around with the highlight in the light segment so we do not need this highlight segment to come up in the effect one all right so depending on the picture if you want to add a bit of grain you can like you know play around with a grain as well so it totally depends upon you as i said earlier now if we move up to the details option you can see over here there are sharpening noise reduction color noise reduction this basically comes in handy uh, whenever these are basically some pro level things but we really do not need them because whenever you're having let's say color noise reduction is basically when you are using this color palette right when you're using this color palette and what happens is the colors become the colors don't look real or, or sometimes the colors don't blend in what you do is you use the color noise reduction and it makes the color blend with the uh, picture really nicely okay and the same goes for noise reduction if your picture has much grains in it like let's say you clicked a picture at night and it is like really hazy you can use this noise reduction and uh, have easily balance out the grain in the picture so in optics what happens is if you are basically clicking the picture using a DSLR you can use uh, chromatic aberration basically uh, it changes the overall uh, setup from the camera and you can just, just you know add in your own settings to it so I don't really use this because mostly if we are using our phone we, we, we use phones to click our pictures most often so we do not really need this, such uh, options so this optics is not necessary it doesn't come in handy yet I mean most of the time and there is this geometry option geometry is also available in the paid version so if you want to get a paid version you can you can go for it no one is stopping you but I would suggest that it is not necessary in the beginner level so you do not need it right and in the preset option what happens is you have a bit of like you know those same things are over here it is just that it has more adjustment to it and nothing else so okay I mean I mean I mean if you are using around the profile segment you do not need this preset segment okay so basically our editing gets done with with the detail option and that is how we can use the tools in Adobe Lightroom to make our photo look really professional so why do I keep on saying that thing because you can see this photo was nothing before this photo was nothing but after I edited it after I changed around and played with the colors, you can see what it what it became. Look, just look at it. It became a masterpiece. It became something else. Okay, guys. So today we have finished learning about the functions of the tools found in Adobe Lightroom. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have enjoyed this video and have learned about the basics, don't forget to like this video. And do subscribe if you want to stay updated about all my videos. And yes, part two of Adobe Lightroom tutorial on how you can edit moody tones and everything in Lightroom is coming super soon. So don't forget to subscribe and share this video, obviously, because many of your friends out there are as well struggling with editing their own photos. So why not help them out? Spread love. Cheers.